As humans, we love orderliness. We love things to be structured, organized, classified like books in neat little shelves in a library. We classify molecules and we classify documents from quarks to galaxies and from ideas to actions. Man loves putting similar things in baskets and labeling them because patterns appeal to our aesthetic senses. And you know what else appeals to our aesthetic senses? Music. Compositions in Carnatic music from the 14th to the 18th century were at their peak. New songs were written every day and not just in one language. We had Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada, Sanskrit, and even Marathi. With this came a need to classify and organize these songs. So the idea was simple. Instead of going by an alphabetical order or a chronological order, songs were grouped according to the ragas they were, they were composed in. There were about a hundred ragas back then. But it raises a natural question. How do you then organize and classify these ragas? And Venkata Makhin, a 17th century musicologist, had a proposal. But before we discuss that, we need this. Carnatic ragas, 2,000 years of musicology crammed into just two minutes. So, what is a raga? Well, if you look up on the internet, it says raga comes from the Sanskrit word for color. But we know raga is not color, right? It's related to music. What is a raga? Some say that raga is manifestation of emotion into music. Some say that raga is an attempt to achieve the primordial voice of the universe. Pandit Jashrat says raga is love. But what is it? I mean, those are not the definitions by which you can organize or classify something. And that's the first challenge Venkata Makhin has to face. What is a raga? How do you formalize it? How do you write down a definition that has the meaning of the entire concept? So he looked at the components. A raga has three important components, swaras, shruti, and gamaka. There are a lot of other components. There is vadi, samvadi, arohanam, avrohanam, but he ignored them in a simplified model. So there are two things, swaras and gamakas. Now swaras are the fundamental notes, the sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. And an arrangement of these form the structure, the backbone of a raga. So I can arbitrarily pick up some swaras. I can go ahead like sa, re, ma, pa, dha, sa, re, dha, pa, nidha, pa, ma, ga, re, sa, sa, re, sa. And that forms the structure of a raga. Now, does it sound like music to any one of you? It sounds just like an arrangement of sounds. It is not music. And therefore, they must be sung at particular frequencies, so that we get something like this. So that was just putting these bunch of consonants, this arrangement, string of consonants with a particular frequency. So that forms the structure of a raga. Some might appreciate that as music. If you might have noticed, there are these, some notes were stretched, some were given emphasis on, some was not given emphasis on, some were ornamented. These ornamentations are called gamakas. So we have swaras, arrangement of swaras, sung at different frequencies form the base of a raga, and there are ornamentations on it called gamakas. So what are these shrutis? Well, there are 12 fundamental frequencies. If you have seen a keyboard or a piano, there are seven black keys, there are seven white keys, five black keys. They form the backbone, the, the structure of this Shruti. So there are 12 of those. These 12 keys represent the 12 frequencies. And not every swara can be sung at any frequency. So you can see sa can be sung at only one. Ri, ga, dha, ni, they can be sung at three of those. Ma can be sung at only two. Pa can be sung at only one. And Venkata Makhin goes ahead with these three components. He talks about swaras and shrutis in particular. He does not stress on gamakas because they are very impressionistic. They are very subjective. They are very artistic and not very formal. So the question that he introduces the concept of meda. What is a meda? Meda is a group of ragas. Ragas with the same choice of shrutis for a swara are 
grouped together. So he says, a raga is defined as an arrangement of saras swung at particular frequencies with ornamentation and that gives rise to only one thing, a brawl. Why? Because a raga is not combinatorics. What is a raga? A raga has been passed down from generation to generation, from centuries to centuries, from father to son, from mother to daughter, from teacher to student. A raga has an emotion, a raga has a mood, a raga has a feeling, it has a voice of its own. It's not combinatorics, you can't just pick some consonants and sing them at some frequencies. That was the main argument against his model. You can't make raga into mere combinatorics. But well, Venkata Makhin thought that the only way to go systematically with formalized with structure of ragas to classify them, order them, he had to do this. He had to make such a definition that does not take in emotion, that does not take in mood. So what he does is, he now wants to find out how many medas are possible. A very simple counting problem. We'll also go through it. We have the seven swaras, the different well, shrutis at which we can sing them. So let's pick up. We have to pick each and every swara and count the number of possible frequencies we can go ahead with them. So sa can be sung at only one way. As you can see, there is only one key for sa. For ri and ga, you can sing them in four choose two ways. That is six. So these are the possible combinations. We have ma, which can be sung in two ways. Ma one or you sing ma two. A can be sung only in one way, there is only one key. And just like Ri and Ga, Tha and Ni can be sung in four choose two, that is six ways. And if you multiply them, there are 72 possible patterns. So he says, there are 72 medas, these patterns in which ragas can be made, and that is how we are going to organize them, structure them. So he says, he proposes then another thing called chakras. So chakras actually are like drawers. If your ragas are files, your songs are like documents, so you start with your documents, find the file responsible for it. Now in those ragas, you find the meda, that will be your file folder in which you are going to keep all your files. And these folders, you are going to place in the documents. So then when you want to look for a file, you go to the drawer, then you find the file folder, then you go to the file, then you go to the song required. That is something what we do today in our computers, we have files and folders for our important documents. So he proposed something similar to it. He proposed 12 chakras, like 12 drawers, and it's based on the ri, ga, and ma shrutis that he selected for them. Very nice thing, very systematic, looks nice. He also proposed this round structure for things. You can see it goes from one to 72, gave really nice names for all of them. These are the 12 chakras. But then he observed, okay, so we have these hundred ragas, let's say about a hundred ragas. We put them into these files, we put them into folders, we put them into drawers. What he notices, not all of them are occupied. A lot of patterns, a lot of medas in which ragas do not exist. Only 18 of these 72 medas at that time had ragas in them. So he thinks, okay, let me pick up one that does not have any raga in. So he picks up this one, number 57, it's called Simendra Matyamam, goes ahead with it, picks out the Shrutis that correspond to that, it's Sa, Ri, Tu, Ga, Tu, Ma, Tu, Pa, Tha, One, Ni, Three, adds a Sa from the next octave and declares it to be his own Raga. He calls it a new Raga. He creates a Raga and names it Raga Simendra Matyamam and it, it sounds something like this. Sarigama Padanisa. He calls this a new raga. What happens when you do this? Only one thing a brawl. Ragas, as I said, are passed down from generations to generations. They are too holy to be touched by mortals like us. People have theories that ragas are actually gifts from the gods to us. They are the way in which we can understand the fundamental voice of the universe. And this man is doing some combinatorics, counting ragas as if it's mathematics. 
putting some pattern and declaring it to be a new raga that's blasphemy that's not allowed some people were against it some people were for it some people found it interesting but everyone noticed it what he did was a revolution he tried going from theory to practice what he tried is to create a change in practice due to theory then the composers that followed the trinity the other composers of 17th and 18th centuries they thought why just simendra madhyamam let's pick up all of them and create new ragas and then new and new ragas were created all 72 of those drawers and files and folders that we discussed started having ragas in them followed by having compositions in them and an entire revolution in carnatic music was caused due to this and this is special because in no other history of music made be turkish classical music made be western classical music made be north indian the hindustani classical music has theory affected practice in this way there were 100 ragas now there are hundreds of them there are about 1000 ragas order of 1000 ragas simply because one man wanted to look at in a systematic way dear friends we often believe that theory should follow practice that the purpose of theory is to follow practice to explain practice we should write equations looking at what the results we get from the experiments so if you want to do physics go to a lab because blackboard physics is mere friction that the problems of the economic world cannot be solved by equations and inequalities written in some research institute one has to go and do things but we often because we often make this mistake that theory is just to explain practice actually theory is like the process of manthan the process of churning the superficial assumptions and multiple interpretations often cloud our understanding of a concept any subject and it is only by deep contemplation can we get rid of it that can we dig into the amritam the essence of the subject the fundamental structure and pattern that lies within it so that we can reveal deeper truths so that we can make a change and once you do that practice follows theory because the essence of the subject the very foundation reveals truth and that truth can help you build on new models in practice so no matter what your idea is if your idea is about carnatic music or is it about changing the environment or is it about creating a new app or is it about putting man on mars a theoretical study digging deep to its essence will reveal greater truths about it it will help you make it an idea worth sharing thank you